Greetings, folks. If you are pressing play on this video, it's probably because you deal with neck pain um, often or every now and then or just right in this moment. And I feel ya. Neck pain can be discouraging sometimes because it's, I know myself sometimes, you know, if I've waited too long to get a massage or I've just done something super, super physical with my body recently or maybe stress or whatever the case may be, if I'm dealing with really intense neck pain, sometimes I'm just like, I just want to rip my head off of my neck, you know, and just, just separate it or just, you know, really straight stretch it out or something so i know it can be really frustrating sometimes to have neck pains so i want to give some tips about how to deal with this the most important thing is breathing okay if you aren't breathing while you're massaging your neck and in fact if you aren't really mindfully breathing which means just really paying attention to your inhales and your exhales and noticing how your body inhales and how your body exhales. Are you filling entirely up with air and then deflating all the way? Or is it just a very small, you know, and those are two extremes, but we want to focus on the, the first type that I described, which is, you know, my whole body all the way down all the way up <sighs> and letting it all go so that kind of breathing the other thing that's important to think about is how you want to position your body do you want to sit do you want to stand do you want to lay down any of these are valid but it should be something you think about at first um if you're sitting or standing your arms may uh, they have more of a chance of getting tired just because you know they're fighting gravity um if you're laying down then you know you don't have that problem as much I'm also going to show uh, some different types of tools that are helpful for me personally, at least when it comes to um, massaging my neck. Um, not everybody is able to use their hands um, or has all their hands. And so I just want to show all of the different types of ways that I could think of um, that might be helpful. The first area that I want to start with is occipital areas, this back here, um, like right where your scalp ends and your neck starts. So uh, a, a word that us massage therapists use is palpate. Okay, so when we're just kind of feeling the tissue to just get a gauge on, you know, where the knots are and where the tension is and all of that good stuff, um, or not so good stuff. And uh, so we palpate and we just kind of get the lay of the land first. So I want you to do that with your own neck. Um, so the first thing we're going to palpate for is your vertebra. Okay. You know, you've got your spine and on your spine, you have all these bumps, right? These, these processes, these bony processes. And if you tilt your head down, you will be able to have an easier um, job of finding these bumps uh, depending on what you've got going on back here some stick out more easily than others but you do have them uh, regardless of how hard they are to, how hard they are to find so as you're looking down I want you to just put your hands or your hand um, on your shoulder neck kind of area just like falling right here okay and then I want you to use your fingers, the, the pads of your fingers, or you could use the pads of your uh, hands if you needed to. Uh, I'm going to use my fingers. So I'm going to say, oh, I, okay, I can feel a bump here. I can poke it. I can hear it. It's hard. It's solid. It's a bone. All right, what's on the side? Okay, this is some tissue. This tissue, these muscles, they're kind of they're kind of hard. They're not like bony hard, but they're they're not very mushy. All right. So then um, walking up, here's another bony bump, no vertebra. Keep going. Keep just walking up that spine. I want you to keep walking until you feel the very 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 last bump. Now this is gonna mean really getting up into there. You're gonna get into your hairline. Um, and you're going to find the very last bump and right at 
after the very last bump, there's just a little divot, okay? It's right after the bump, the last bump at the top here, and you're gonna find this divot. It's like a, like a pocket for your fingers, almost. Like, like our necks were made for this or something. And you're gonna just kind of let your, your fingers or your finger rest or your tool rest right in this little pocket. So if you're if you're having a little bit of trouble finding the pocket, I promise you you'll be able to find it this next this next section. So once you have done what I said, you want to bring your eye line back to straight forward. Okay, so you're 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 facing forward. You know you you want a good posture, right? Or if you're laying down, you know you're facing straight up, right? So your neck is perfectly straight. Is what I'm saying. So this pocket is a little more noticeable now that we are all the way down. We've kind of come up and this pocket's more noticeable. You know, you can kind of wiggle your fingers around in there and you got this pocket. So I want you to kind of play around with this area. This area is so important. It is like a major reset button for our bodies. It can reset stress. It can reset your breathing. It can reset your cranial sacral flow, your lymphatic flow any type of flow like this is just the the motherland of spots on the map of your body if you will this is the spot so I want you to kind of walk your fingers all over in this general area get a lay of the land what do you feel I know that I feel some some hard type of ropey muscles on the sides of that pocket that kind of go like straight up into my skull almost right um if i walk my fingers out to the sides of my head from where it was like so i can walk my fingers all the way over to the back of my ears give my give my ears a pull right because everything is connected so all the parts of your ears eventually in some way are connected to this spot here so tugging on them is a great idea it just helps loosen up this whole area walking around walking around so if you notice that on both sides of the line of bumps that you have your spine here and then the pocket that we found those are those are central to the body if we if we look on the sides of them we've got all this meat right now you might feel kind of rope like muscles you might feel um big bumps or rock like type of things those would be knots right you might find um it's just tender when you press there you might find that you are feeling emotion suddenly when you press there okay this area can hold on to so much if we don't work on releasing it so you know it could be stress from a month ago that's still there if you just haven't paid any attention to this area um really that goes for any part of the body but i want you to not only focus on the physical touch that you're doing in this area but what's going on in your mind is your mind drifting? Are you thinking about other people? Are you thinking about your to-do list? Um, if so, try to bring your focus back to your inhales and your exhales and um, see what it's like to pair those inhales and exhales with what you're doing. Um, really just imagining that you're, you're, putting, you're putting love into yourself. You truly are. Um, and so when you think about that, it can really change the whole experience. You're not just prodding you know, you're not just poking at yourself, right? We're not just poking our meat stick at our big meat log here. We're more than that. So really um, focusing on the energy that surrounds this area and how it is involved in your life and your day to day. And maybe think about how the connection might uh, shed light on changes that you could make um, small or big to just be nicer to your neck so that is the occiput area now one of my favorite tools is this um it's got many different names this one in particular is called a um inducer 
pillow. Um, if you were to go on Amazon, for example, and type in inducer original, you would literally see this. This is actually a tool that's used in cranial sacral therapy, um, but I like to use it just for my own self-care. Um, and you, the pocket that we talked about pretty much goes right where this is, right where this little divot is, and your the, the muscles that framed that pocket, that kind of like goes straight up into your skull, they would rest on these bumps and uh, you would lay on this. So you would be laying down and so it would look a little something like nestling it up in there and then laying down. You can just kind of play with like what feels good and you just lay there and you breathe and it is magical. So once we've shown some love to the occipital area, um, this is kind of where it is nice to do a little bit of stretching, right? Because it's not only pressing and, and pressure and palpating and manipulation, it's also stretching, kind of loosening things up. So, you know, you might have seen these stretches on various different platforms from different yoga teachers, massage therapists, dance teachers, you know, these are pretty well-known, uh, but that's because they really work, especially if you try to incorporate them into your everyday, because once you build that habit of stretching your neck, I promise you, I promise you, you will see the difference. Um, so first step, of course, is to roll your shoulders back. You lift them up to your ears and down. Good. Kind of squeezing your your scapulas, those shoulder blades, towards each other as your as your shoulders come down, leaving this this space here, this openness where things can flow and release. So once you're here, sometimes it's helpful to, for me to put my hands on my shoulders when I do this because it reminds my shoulders to stay um, in this position. It's also helpful to think about contracting your core. Um, sometimes our backs can get a little um, out of control, splayed back a little bit um, with this arc that you see here. Um, if we just focus a little bit on contracting our core, which naturally brings our, pel our pelvic floor um, forward as well and kind of aligns us straight up from, you know, tailbone of the spine all the way up to our neck. The idea that our neck is attached is like is our spine, is the top of our spine, right? Our cervical spine. Um, what's happening down here is inevitably going to affect what's happening up here. So even when we're just working on up here, we want to keep a, a solid core foundation so that your spine can be straight and the energy can flow. So, like I said, I like to keep my hands here sometimes to, as a nice reminder. So then, um, neck circles. These are very important to listen to your body. Do not just do what I do. Um, I have a crazy range of motion with my neck that is not the majority of people. So, please do not feel bad about yourself if you are not able to move your neck in the crazy ways that I am. Uh, if you think about your nose as being the pilot in this operation, um, you can point your nose down, listening to your body, letting your nose go down as far as it feels good to. And on an inhale, pick a direction to go and you're gonna start to draw circles with your nose. And start with small circles, whatever that means to you. You don't need to go, go hard yet. Maybe you can make them bigger now. If your head wants to drop all the way back down, if you want to roll it around only if that feels good. If not, listen to yourself and stick with what feels good. Maybe you have your head hang and you just kind of go back and forth down here. Maybe you say, ooh, that spot feels good right there, and you kind of wiggle around or just breathe. And then switch the direction.
kind of loosey goosey that all up. Now we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of your neck, right? The really kind of what you would think of as neck, just off the top of your head, right? Because this, this area we were just working on is so, so important to your neck. But most times when people think of neck, they think of this, right? And so it's kind of medium between your head and your shoulders and your upper back uh, and your pecs. And all of those things play into your neck. So if you start to do some of the things I'm about to show and you feel anything in your pecs, um, that could be a sign that maybe you should move down and start to massage your pecs a little bit because they are connected to certain neck muscles. Um, likewise, if your shoulders are here, like if your deltoids start to um, hurt or just talk to you, right? If they just suddenly become on your radar as you're working the neck um, or also your hands, your fingers, if there's any type of tinglies while you're working on your neck, these are all good things to make notice of and to um, put them on your list to give love to them next. Uh, and of course, same with your shoulders and your mid back. So the most superficial muscle that kind of takes up a wide berth of your neck is the trapezius. Now, the trapezius isn't just here. It is a pretty big muscle and it, it's also a part of your um, upper back. Uh, but as far as for your neck, it uh, it is pretty much the most noticeable muscle for you. It is the muscle right at the top. So our body has like layers and layers and layers of muscles. This is like the most closest layer to the skin. And so this is where you're going to be able to feel knots the most. Um, and so we come back to our spine, our vertebra, and this time, instead of going all the way up like we did, we're going to palpate outwards. Now you will find a crease between your vertebra and the muscle that is right next to it. And it's almost a crease that you have to create by pressing into that spot, right? So, you know, you've got the, the, the vertebra here, and then you've got the muscle that I'm talking about, like right here. And although they are next to each other, there is still space there, correct? So we're wanting to push through just a little bit. Don't hurt yourself. Don't go beyond what feels good. But I want you to kind of dig in just enough so that you can feel that your fingers are, are almost trying to separate that muscle, which might be kind of ropey, and your spine. So here, you, you really just play. You kind of walk around. Sometimes I'll make like circles with my fingers. I can go into the crease. I start to drop my shoulder when I do that though, because if I start here and I do these circles and then I keep bringing these circles down, I'll start to see, I feel a knot there. I'll start to come into the more shouldery part of your traps. Um, you know, this crease. This crease right here is just notorious for knots, stress, tension, for literally almost anybody on this planet. You know, we've got phones and we've got computers and we've got driving with the phone and we've got cooking with the phone and you know we've got holding the baby while doing something and there's always you know oh it's really cold it's really 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 cold there's all oh, there's so many times that we just tense this up and so we're really focusing on these creases here and especially the neck part, obviously, because it's a neck video, but you don't have to stay on the neck just because it's a neck video. You can go all the way down to, you can kind of push your shoulder down, can even just kind of wipe away some of the crap. Yeah, just psh, psh. 
So really playing around with those prominent meaty muscles that you feel right at the top without having to dig too much and the crease that is happening with those muscles. And pressing, um, I can also, there's also also nice to like knead. So, you know, flat hands and then bring your fingers toward your palms and let go. Flat hands and bring your fingers toward your palms and let go. Um, the circles, you can tap with one finger or a bunch of fingers. You can stretch your neck to then tap around. One thing that is good to uh, remember when you're doing this is that, especially for the neck, you want to be pushing in the direction from upwards to downwards. You don't want to be pushing up. Um, this is because we're above the heart. You know, if we were on the limbs, I might say to push up, um, to push up. But instead, because we're up here, if we're pushing up, we're just, we're almost like putting more crap into that area that is just notorious for holding the crap of life. Anyways, if you will. Um, and so we don't want to push it back up. We want to we want to wipe it out, you know. We just don't want that in there anymore. So it's always going to be downwards when you're working with the neck. Um, and really just showing yourself love. Now, some tools come in handy for this area. This is a lacrosse ball. It could also be a tennis ball if you wanted less pressure. Um, depends on how intense you want to dig into those muscles. Uh, this is a lifesaver. You can put it in a sock if you want, like a long sock, and say it's in a sock right now and I'm holding the, the top part of the sock, the opening of the sock, right? And this is hanging in the bottom of the, so of the sock. If it was in a sock, you wouldn't be able to see it right now. So then I would take the sock and I would go up against a wall Naturally, I wouldn't have to hold this here because it'd be in the sock, and I would just kind of let it, you know, put my back up to the wall with this ball sock in the middle, and hold the sock up here so the ball doesn't drop, and I would just roll around up and down the wall, excuse me, to see what feels good, where I want to sit on it. So many hiccups where I don't want to sit on it for too long. And you can also do this on the floor. So really any hard surface that you can back up against and rub your neck on like a cat feels really good. Another helpful thing if you don't have a, and also you don't need a sock for this. Um, if you want to test your skills of just keeping it between you and the wall without the sock or you and the floor without the sock, be my guest. Uh, this is a Theracane. Um, that's, that's the brand name of this, but there are different brands. It's really just a, a massage cane. Um, because it's a cane and then it's got all these things coming off of it that are helpful for massage. So you really can pick any knob. I like this one the most for neck because it just gives me the most leverage. And I got this off of Amazon, but I've seen them in like big box stores now too, so... It should be easy to find. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna say, okay, let's say that this muscle right here, this trap that eventually goes into right here, I would massage that. So I'm gonna kind of maybe find that pocket we talked about. And then I'm gonna go off to the side and then I'm just kind of wiggle my cane down, staying on that side muscle and maybe I just want to hold it still for a sec. Maybe I want to drag it down. Oh, found the shoulder knot. Crunch, crunch, crunch. So that's one way. One other way. Now, the last part of the neck that I want to talk about, of course, before I go there, back to the traps, the trapezius. Um, there are way more neck muscles than what I've talked about in this, this area. However, they are deeper to the trap 
And so if you're working on the trap, you're somewhat working on those two. And if you want to go deeper into those muscle layers, you can. You just need to breathe deeply. It's helpful to, um, on your exhales, is when you push deeper. It kind of is um, very sync, sync, syncing up with the body in that way. Um, so, you know, there's that area. Then there's this whole front of the neck. And this can be a very sensitive, um, fragile place for people to massage, especially if they're getting a massage from somebody else. Because, you know, we don't ever want to make somebody feel like we're about to choke them or hurt them or anything like that. So even when it's just yourself touching this area, really extra love and gentleness and kindness to this area. Now, okay, see this face? Okay, so this face highlights this part. <laughs> like from here to here. So if you do that, that really ridiculous uh, face that I just made, if you kind of go, this part of your, you know, like there's a part of your neck that like tenses, right? So this is called the platysma and it is tissue that is, uh, plays a very big part just in how your body holds energy. Less so like how it holds knots and things like that, but t tension and stress can be held in that area, um, especially with masks nowadays. Like I know myself, I find myself making weird like mouth faces um under my mask as like a, as like a concentration face so i'll be like you know like doing that's an exaggeration but doing some kind of weird tensing in my jaw my mouth my my front neck here where it's just i'll notice it and i'll be like oh man right why was i doing that you know that's that's uncomfortable and so that's another way that this area could be affected. But your platysma, it pretty much runs, if you could, if my fingers were like drawing this like sheath of tissue, it would start from like here and go all the way down like that. Okay. So what I like to do here is really just like wipe away the stress and the energy that doesn't serve me anymore and maybe i'll just go like right under where my my ear and my jaw meet and maybe i'll just rub it a little bit maybe i'll let my my jaw go lump right i don't know okay so we've got that and it also helps in just warming up this area of the neck and getting yourself familiar with this area of the neck so I want to talk about the SCM, the sternocleidomastoid. This is a neck muscle that is very crucial to nodding yes, nodding no, and um, like cocking your head to hear what somebody's saying, kind of those types of neck movements, like, huh, what, huh? And also a stabilizer for your neck. So this is very crucial, especially if you've been in any type of car accident, um, if you ride roller coasters a lot, if you race cars, it stabilizes, right? So if you think about being on a roller coaster and you're somebody who doesn't want your head to flop all over the place while you're riding on the roller coaster, which is most people, I generally don't see willy-nilly necks just like waving in the wind um, because that would be really dangerous, right? On a roller coaster. And so we just instinctually stabilize our neck. And so our entire body and what our body is in and what that is in is moving just at a crazy speed. But yet somehow we're able to keep our head right where it is in space. And this is done by the side of, <laughs> by the sternocleidomastoid, SCM. You can see why we call it SCM. 
So this is easy to locate. Um, especially if you're laying down, but you can also do it by sitting, which I'm going to show you. So if you turn to one side, you can, or rather if you put your hands on your neck and just a little bit of pressure, not, it shouldn't feel anything close to choking. Um, just a little bit of pressure so that you're not just resting. There's just a little bit of pressure into your neck so that you are able to feel the movements of your muscles when you move your head. Now go ahead and move your head no a few times. Shaking no. No, I don't want neck pain. No, I don't want neck pain. Do you feel that when you go to one side, on its opposite side, you feel a muscle kind of bumping out into your hand? And then when you go to the other side, the, that's, that opposite side does it as well. Then try nodding yes and no. Similar, there's something happening in those muscles, right? There's some movement that you feel. Or, huh? What? Huh? You can feel that a little bit too. So I want you to shake your head yes and no enough to where you can really locate, where you can pinpoint one spot on each side that you feel this muscle movement happening. All right. I have got mine. Okay. So now just move your shake or wave your head to one side. Like you're saying no, but then you just stop. So whatever side you are looking towards, the opposite side of that, I want you to keep those fingers on that muscle that you felt move when you did this. You can take your other one, your other hand down. This is one part of your SCM. It has the potential of feeling very tender when you are touching it, especially if you've been in a car accident, you're a car racer, etc. Right? All of those things I said. If you are having to stabilize your head through a lot of commotion on a pretty often basis, or there was one traumatic moment where you had to, this might uh, feel tender. And so I want you to be gentle with yourself and only press as much as it feels good to. And remember to breathe. Now this muscle, uh, is happiest when we kind of like, we pet it. Like, there, there, little SCM. Everything's okay. Now you might start to notice feeling emotions when you are rubbing this area. Remember we're rubbing from up to down. That's because this is another place where a lot of stress, emotion, energy can be stored. Um, not only stored, but like stuck. And so we're just going to gently pet it, just asking anything that doesn't want to be there anymore to just allow itself to detach and let go. And as you become familiar with it, I want you to just keep petting all the way down, just staying on this muscle you'll be able to feel when it becomes something else. Um, so for me, that's about right here, right? Where this crease, crease begins to start. So I'm just gonna pet and pet and pet. Now, if I go on the opposite side from where that crease is, if I just turn the corner a little bit here, I'll notice that my SEM actually goes towards and under my clavicle here, right? This bone right here. So my SCM goes down and yours does too. Down and connects. Now this could be a tender spot. I like to just do some gentle poking here where it, where it connects to that, where it meets the clavicle. And you can even kind of do like a, oh, I'm going, under the bridge obviously you can't go under but you can have that idea of you know keep one finger there and then you just trace over it and you come right down to the pecs now your pecs might be tender might be helpful to massage some of your pecs here because if these are tight your front neck muscles are gonna be tight or at least a little unhappy i like to poke here just a little tap 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 walking 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 all around my pec Oh, that's tender there for sure. 
You can go, if you're brave, you can walk it all the way over to your armpit. Ooh, that's tender. You can go up. So this is a great example of how just everything's connected, right? Even if they're not like literally touching each other, connected, um, they're somehow connected in a domino effect sort of way. If this is tight, then this is gonna be tight, then this is gonna be tight, then this is gonna be tight, then these are gonna be tingly. You know, there's all sorts of lovely connections. All right, and once you feel like you've given that area love, come back to the other side, do our test again. Where do I feel the muscle movement? Where do I feel the muscle movement? Feel it right here. Oh yeah, there's that bump. Mm, petting the deer SCM. There, there, SCM. <sighs> Breathing out. Coming around the corner. Ooh, that's tender. Down into the pecs to the armpit. Mm -hmm. Maybe some more shoulder rolls after all that. Awesome. So that's what I have for self neck massage. If you want any help, please message us through Facebook or message us through Instagram, or you can go to our website, tru-connection.com. Um, there's a contact us page there. And just please take care of yourselves because you're so special and wonderful and you have so much to offer this world and you cannot take care of others if you don't take care of yourself first and your neck is so important and you should love your neck and thank your neck and give yourself give your neck love and massages and any type of therapy that feels good you can put some heat on your neck you can put some ice on your neck depending on what you're going through uh, love your neck. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys.